Hey YouTube, how you doing? It's Jason again with another tutorial. This time I'm going to go over how to make fake snow with Adobe After Effects. And I know I have kind of a weird collection of tutorials going, but this one, you know, I just do them as I get gigs and I have to do things and I had to figure this out. So I wanted to make one with realistic snow that didn't use any third-party plugins, just After Effects um, stock plugins. So I'm going to show you the original video without snow. This is from a music video and I'm going to link to the video right here. And here's the shot again with the snow effect added. And I think this is pretty subtle. In fact, it might even be a little too subtle. It looks like it's sort of a spitting rain kind of snow. Alright, so let's get to it. To start with, we're going to bring in the footage. Clip number 323 here. Got my footage in After Effects. And I'm going to right click on it, say New Comp from Selection. So we have the comp here. Okay, so for the snow, I'm going to add a new layer. It's going to be a solid. And just OK, it doesn't matter. Um, and then under Effects and Presets over here, I'm going to type Particle. And the one that I'm going to use is Particle World. There's Particle Systems. These different ones are slight variations of the particle effect. Particle World has 3D space, and we want that in order to get the depth. So I just added Particle World. I dragged it on top of my gray solid layer. And if we play this, we should see that looks pretty good. That looks pretty realistic. OK, end of tutorial. No. Now we've got some stuff that looks like a fireworks spewing out. And we want it to look like snow. The first thing that we have to do is we don't want um, the particle stuff to start and then you know start spewing out. We want it to already be essentially snowing. So I'm going to take the red track and drag it over to the left. That's going to change the start time. So you can see there it's already snowing, so to speak. And then we can fill it all the way to the end as well. Okay, so it is already snowing now. It's snowing yellow, orangey, flame-looking snow. So we've got our effect over here. To get to your effect, if it's not already over here in your little um, window, you just uh, expand your track, expand effects, click on Particle World, and there you are. So the first thing that we're going to do is we've got all of these. If you haven't used the particle system before, um, you can kind of uh, work your way through it using just common sense. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the producer settings. And we don't want the snow to be emanating from this point. All right? That doesn't look right. So what we can do is the radius is kind of the spread, like how far it goes. Uh, and the X radius is going to spread this out so that it's not quite emanating from one point. So let's spread that out and just do it until it looks good. It's just kind of a visual thing. So there we go. We've got some uh, particles kind of falling. Okay. Now the next thing is we don't really want it falling from the middle of the screen. So we're going to change the position, the Y position. Sorry, that's the Z position. Uh, we're going to change the Y position. We're going to move it up so that the snow is coming from above where we can visually see it. So let's check that out. So we're getting some, something that looks a little like snow, right? Yes. <clears throat> and I think I'll maybe do the... Uh, X radius even a little bit more. There we go. So it's pretty thick. So it's kind of looking like snow already, huh? Not too bad. And then the radius Z is the depth. And that's going to make things look like they're more in the distance and whatnot. So you can kind of observe what that's doing. It just gives a little more depth to the snow so it doesn't seem like it's flat. <clears throat> Okay, so let's get rid of this fake look. So that that's kind of, uh, I might even 
do the x-rays even a little bit more. Just make it a little bit more subtle. Okay, but we gotta do something about this fake looking snow color before we go on. So if we go under particle, we've got the colors, and of course we're just gonna make those white because snow is white, right? You can make it kind of like not perfectly white. And it has a beginning color and an ending color, and I don't really see any reason why for snow it should, they shouldn't both just be white. But Okay, so we've got white snow now, computery looking, but it's, it's turning into something. So the next thing I'm going to look at under the physics menu is there's another menu called floor. And I'm going to go into the floor, and the floor is this blue grid here, and it's basically saying the ground or the floor or whatever. Um, since I'm not going to motion track this, I'm just going to make it kind of a little bit higher than it needs to be. So there you can see the floor going up and down, maybe about right there. So as it pans up, it's a little off there. You know, I would, I would motion track this if I was going to get real intense about it. But... We're going to specify what we want to happen when these particles hit the floor. And we are going to say only above the floor. So we don't want them to continue to be visible because we want it to make it look like when they hit the ground that they disappear. And it kind of helps a little bit with um, making them look like they're not just flying right by the screen. Like it, Some of them look like they kind of stop back here on the ground little bit and then when it pans up it kind of looks a little fakey because now you can see they're not landing all the way but once I put the blur and stuff on here it's not going to be that bad okay so I would encourage you to just go in and just tweak with all these things you can change these animations to all kinds of other stuff like uh, you know twirl makes it look like a more of a blizzardy effect or something like that the explosive one is the one that's just kind of straight down in this case so we'll stick with that one for this one thing is that these lines are way too sharp. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a fast blur to the uh, our solid. So we now have another effect. And then I'm going to just turn the blurriness up. And that's going to make these snowflakes kind of disappear a bit. And as soon as I do that, it immediately looks a little more like snow. Now, we have sort of a problem. And that is... These snowflakes that we're making here are kind of supposed to be in the distance. But we have our actor in the foreground walking by, and he's he has snowflakes in front of him. But these snowflakes really should be behind him. So we have to do a mask. And I'm going to do a mask, and I'm going to mask it out so that he's always in front of all these snowflakes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this layer. I'm going to move this one on top of the other one. So we don't see any snowflakes now, right? Because it's below us, below this layer. Yes. And I'm going to say layer, mask, new mask. I'm going to go back to the beginning. And this mask is going to... I'm not going to make this a really um, incredible mask for the purposes of this demo. All right, that's going to be good enough for demo purposes. All right, got our mask. <clears throat> now he's off screen, so I'm going to move my mask off here. We're going to hit the little auto keyframe clock thing. So I'm now keyframing the mask. Scoot this guy forward a little bit. All right, so there we go. I just keep following him. Putting in the keyframes. Not too many, just a few, just to get it somewhat decent looking. Okay, so let's watch that and see if the mask moves with him. It moves with him, all right. It's not too bad. All right, I just had to restart After Effects because it was screwing up real bad. 
But anyway, what I've done is I've just created a mask, and you can see here that I've got it on add, so, and uh, we do not, we don't, we're only showing this um, copy of the video above the snow, but we're only showing what's inside the mask. Uh, let me select something else so we don't see the mask outline. So what happens is here is he's walking in front of the snow. You see that? So the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add another layer of snow. And to make things easy, I'm just going to copy this one that we've got and paste it. So we've got an exact duplicate and put it over on the top. But I'm going to change this top layer of snow, the particle effects. And I'm going to make it look like it is much closer to us, almost moving in front of the camera. And if you saw snowflakes moving right in front of your lens, uh, they wouldn't be in focus, they would be like way out of focus. In fact, they might just be like weird spots on that you would see flashing by and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the flakes really big, for one thing. I'm going to go to the particle world for this here on the top. And I'm just going to disable the other snowflakes for now so that we, we can just see exactly the ones that we are working with. And I'm going to go into the particle, and I'm going to change it from a line to the tripolygon. So let's see what that looks like. So those are a totally different looking shape, you can see. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to blur them like crazy. I'm going to make them real blurry because we don't really want to see that shape. So I'm just making them very blurry. So they're almost just more like, um, you can't really distinguish what they are too well. Okay, I'm going to do a couple of other things. I'm going to take them and I'm going to move them in the uh, producer, I'm going to make the uh, Z radius even greater to make them have more depth. Now we're not seeing as many of them here. So uh, you can go into the uh, birth rate setting and that adds more snowflakes. So you can see there's more there. There we go. So now we have quite a lot of them. I can blur them out a little bit more. And a lot of this is kind of just um, trial and error. So those are the snowflakes that are in front. And maybe I'll try the uh, increasing the Y radius a little bit and the X radius just to get them a little more sparse. And then the last thing I'm going to do is these snowflakes that are coming up right next to the lens, I'm just going to imagine they are not, um, they're going to be more uh, moving faster. So I'm going to raise the gravity up a lot. So they're going to fly by really quick. There you see how sort of quick they're flying by. Okay. And if we add our other snowflakes back in, let's look somewhere else, we should see now he's got snowflakes going on behind him, and then he's got some larger snowflakes in front of him. So they're two sort of different types. And the larger snowflakes are almost just kind of like flashes. You know, and I think that's too many, the birth rate is way too high for the flashes. Subtlety is kind of the key here. see how that looks. Yeah, I wouldn't say I'm like super happy with that. I probably would still change the birth rate to those close ones down quite a lot more. So those close, the close ones, you don't want them as much. There we go. That's getting pretty close to what I had. You know, I still did spend quite a lot more time just going. I don't think there's any, you know, exact science to it because it's going to depend on your shot and what your shot looks like and the colors and stuff like that. So a lot of it's just playing around with these settings, but the basics of it are we had our video, we have a layer of snowflakes in the background, then we have our video again with our mask uh, around it so that this first layer of snow is behind him, and then we have our close-up snowflakes. And so that gives us a, you know, somewhat of a realistic look of snow with uh, no third-party plugins necessary. So that's it. Please feel free to check out Justin Yonke's video, and you can click right here to watch that. 
and stay tuned for more tutorials. If you have any questions, post them down below. If you have any ideas for another video, post those. And I'll see you next time.